We have been making a ton of short, sweet video tutorials on the Singer SE9180. And this one, I'm gonna take you through every step of doing and stitching out an embroidery design from start to finish. So everything I think about when I'm selecting a design, positioning it on the fabric, to stitching it out to what it's supposed to look like at the end and what consummates as a good quality embroidery design. Now, we do have a link of all the videos that we have done on this machine, both the sewing videos and the embroidery videos in the description below. So make sure that if you wanna just kind of start back at the beginning, that you check out that link and work your way through all the videos. Now, we also have some online courses and, and people always ask me, well, how do you get so good at knowing where all the buttons are, which buttons to push when and where? And that is something that we actually do in our Embroidery Essentials online course because not only are you mastering over 15 different embroidery techniques, but what happens is, is every time you do a different technique, you start to do the same steps, the same pattern of selecting a design, opening it up, moving it to where you want it on the fabric, stitching it out, and you do the repetition, and that's what actually gets you comfortable with this machine. Believe me, after you do a bunch of these different techniques, you start to realize what is built into your machine, how to get to it and it becomes a lot quicker as you go through it. So check out that course. That is our most popular course and there's some free video lessons that you can watch to see if that course is right for you. So as we've referenced that, that is truly a great place to start. Now we've already done a video on how to hoop up your fabric. We've talked a little bit about stabilizer. That's another thing. We actually have a whole entire course called Machine Embroidery 101. Everything you should know about embroidering before you start uh, where we really dive deep into stabilizers and hooping and working with different types of fabric because not all the time are you gonna just do it on a single piece of fabric, like for a quilt or for a quilt label. So a lot of times we wanna work on a baby outfit or a hat or how to, and you name it. You can actually embroider on just about anything now that you have an embroidery machine. Okay, so I've also picked a design in my mind, so I've already picked it out which one I'm gonna do, and it's gonna take two colors. So that'll be something I'll kinda of point out, is once we get started is how do you know how many colors a design's going to have and how to kinda of plan for it. I am a fan of the thread stands, but you can put your thread, thread right here on the top, just put it on, put a spool cap on, but a thread stand does make things a ton easier as we go. So I've threaded the machine with my first color, and I'm gonna just kinda of show you once we get the design selected, how we hold this thread, how we put the hoop on and some tricks about hooping or putting the hoop onto the embroidery module that you need to know so things don't get offset. So let's go ahead and get started picking our design first. If you haven't already explored the 150 plus designs that are on this machine, you should definitely go about checking them out. You can touch them, they'll pop on your screen. You can touch the trash can to delete it. And then just find one that looks fun. So like this design, I'm looking for maybe something that doesn't take too long to stitch for this example. This has five colors, so five color changes does add to the time it takes to stitch this out. So stitching doesn't take long. There's only, there's not even 5,000 stitches in, the, in this design. That's actually fairly low. Um, it's gonna take time for the color. So what we're thinking of is I'm gonna pick this third design here. It's kind of a fun design. Also less than 5,000 stitches, but only two color changes. Now I can see what size this design is, and I can see kind of based on, you know, the size of my hoop, that it's gonna take up around that much of the fabric. So if you're not great with your centimeters yet, you can definitely kind of get a visual on the screen. Now, once you have selected your design, if you want to add lettering or something to it, you can jump over to the lettering, pick out a font and then add words to this as well. So you can build up your designs and we have some videos on that specifically as well. But once you've selected the design or designs you wanna stitch out um, uh, together, you're gonna jump over to where the little pencil is. So you're always gonna be working between these two pages. The first one with the flower is what you kinda of get when you turn on the machine where you select designs. 
When you get ready to stitch out, you're gonna hop over to the editing part of the machine. You're gonna see a grid, you're gonna see options like for rotating or sizing or changing the color if you want. Uh, mirror imaging, well, this one won't really mirror image, it's very symmetrical. Or maybe you just wanna start over, there's a trash can there. But you can also move it around. So if you've brought more than one design on screen, you might want hit one here and then one you might move below or above that. So you can kind of get things positioned where you want it. I'm gonna just leave this right in the center of my hoop so I can touch it right there. Notice I was touching and dragging as I move, but I can also use these little arrow and they will move very slow and precise amounts of distance. Okay, so when you're ready though, you're gonna go ahead and touch the green check mark. Notice it says no hoop attached. Let's now talk about some hoop attaching etiquette. So you notice that your screw is down here in the bottom uh, right corner and the bracket should be here on the left. Now, as you kind of slide it underneath your foot and notice I don't have to tip it in. I know so many people wanna do this, but all you need to do is just slide it in just enough so it kind of hops into the middle area. And now we're looking at the side here. You're gonna bring the edge of this hoop part kind of into this mouth. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to use some firmness and push the hoop with some purpose. <laughs> and notice that Yes, there is this little button, but I'm only gonna push that, that button down if I'm taking the hoop off. So I don't actually touch it when I'm putting it on. Now, if you feel like you want to um, put your hand somewhere for some resistance, you can put it behind this whole mechanism right here. You can kind of just push everything in and you're listening for the click. So if you don't hear the click, you haven't gone in far enough, I'll be pushing this down and pulling the hoop to, towards me when I go to take it off. So hold down and push on, and now the hoop is attached. Now we can go back to the screen, touch that green check mark. Notice it brings us back to our last screen, so touch that green check mark again. The hoop moves because it's double checking that it has got the right hoop attached. So if you are using one of the optional hoops, you do wanna make sure that it is correctly identified. And I think you actually need to change that in the hoop settings. It might also detect it too, which hoop you've actually put on. But I think you actually go into the settings up here in the hoop selection, which hoop you actually are using. So just keep that in mind if you're using some of the extra hoops that you may have purchased. Now let's go over some of the things that you see on this screen. The only screen that you get to when you have your hoop on and a design selected and you've gone to the final part where we get ready to stitch. First, what if you wanted to stitch this design not in the center of the hoop, but maybe you've actually already marked the center where the design is supposed to be and maybe it needs to be like that's the center of the design. There is a little four position arrow function that is going to allow you to move this design to where you want it to be. So you can use these arrows. They are very small adjustments. Now you can barely see it moving on the screen and you can kind of hear the hoop moving. So you can dial that in to get to right where you've marked your fabric. So you can go left, you can go right. You can pop it back to the center if that's where you think you wanna stitch it. And you also have these little corner options. So by touching those, it will move the design into the far corner, the furthest edge that it's possible to stitch that design in. I've actually thought that that was a cool feature, pretty easy to do there. Okay, one other thing that I like to do before I stitch something out, especially if it's gonna be on a garment or something that's pre-made, okay, is I wanna see, um, am I sure this design is gonna stitch where I think it's gonna stitch? And there's a little picture right here with a magnifying glass and also four corner arrows. Watch what it's doing, it's tracing around the design. So I would have an opportunity right now to visualize that that's where the design is gonna stitch. So for any reason, I was gonna be coming down too close to say a pocket, I would make sure that I wasn't gonna stitch that pocket closed because the design was gonna come as far down as it was showing me. I could bring that design up a little bit just to be um, safe, of course. So always do that, what I call a check, when and right before you're about ready to stitch. All right, let's go ahead and do the green check mark. Now let's take a look at a couple other things you see on the screen. We have our lineup of what it's gonna stitch first, 
and second. If you touch in this little kind of um, list, it will show what is recommended and how many stitches are gonna be done in that color. So that's just kind of a little, you could pop that open and see what your next uh, color will be. I don't need it right now, but down here, we also have the ability to go step by step, like to back up if you have a thread break or you run out of bobbin. You can touch this little needle with the plus minus, and I can go forward within a design. Here, I'll even show you. So if I just hold it, I'm kind of going stitch by stitch through the design. I'm already at stitch 50 of that first color. I can also jump to a whole color worth. So if I just wanna stitch the second color, I can touch the color spool and plus, and then it's gonna let me start on the second part of this particular design. So you can skip over colors if you want. Um, obviously we need to skip back, so we can go back to zero. We could also go back a whole color. One of those will get us back to the, the very first stitch we wanna start off. But if you need to move around skipping colors, backing up, or such, we have that option to do it there. Okay, so we have talked about those things. I think everything else we're just really gonna get ready to stitch and this is the so exciting part. So first off, when you come over here, you can just hold the thread off to the side. You don't have to worry about threading the thread down through the foot or anything, I don't do that at all. But if I go ahead and push the start button, I'm going to realize the little message says, please lower the presser foot. So you can't accidentally stitch with that presser foot up, which I do like. So a few times of accidentally forgetting means it's training you to remember to put the foot down, then go ahead and push the start button. Okay, so go ahead and stitch. And what I like to do is just push it again. I can come in here and cut my thread that I'm holding on to, and then I can keep going. If you need to stop your embroidery, you can push that same button that will pause it. You can also touch right here on this corner of the screen to start and stop your embroidery. But one thing that we wanna take a look, if you're seeing any bobbin thread getting pulled up just a little bit, what I want you to do is come up to your tension, and we need to reduce it down to a smaller number. By reducing this to a smaller number, that means that more thread, the top pretty thread, is gonna go down to the back side, and so it has a prettier look to the embroidery. So don't be afraid to lower your tension, because you actually need to do it, and I didn't talk about that once we got started, but I do see a little bit of my white bobbin thread coming up, and you can actually change this while you're stitching, but when we're done, we'll take a look at what the tension should look like on the back side, and you'll find that you'll be somewhere around two and a half to three for a good looking embroidery tension. Now you also probably wanna to remember to take that back up to the normal number for when you're back to sewing. So you're gonna to need to remember that you're in charge of making your tension be for sewing or embroidery or whichever one you're actually working on. So here's where we can kind of sit back and watch. So one more thing that you do have, if you've downloaded the free MySoNet app on your phone, you can have this machine send you a text message of when this color is done. So it'll alert you for um, the color changes or if it runs out of bobbin or if the thread breaks. And that's a really great feature uh, that this machine has because it has the Wi-Fi capable uh, options and connectivity. So you do want to log in to the machine, uh, the same account information, and to your phone, and they will pair together and it will send you those notifications. So we're just going to let this stitch out and I'll show you how to change colors uh, when it stops. The machine says we're ready to change colors. And I did hear the machine do a thread cut at the end. So what does that mean? Lift up the presser foot. And if you want to, you can even just swipe underneath the foot and it will expose the thread that it's cut. And you can go ahead and take the thread off the machine. We're gonna put the new color on and it, that's exactly what it says, change thread. And then we're going to start it up 
again. Now, I did mention that I had a little bit of white to red kind of showing, it's not bad, but if I had forgotten to lower that tension, when I started, you know what you can do is you can actually go back to the first stitch and re-stitch over the top of an area. Nobody's gonna know where it might have been double stitched, but you will have the, it'll cover up the white stitches um, I, or the, the white bobbin thread coming up. I've also been known if I have a colored pen that is permanent with, uh, that might be similar to that color. I've also been known to touch it up just a little bit when it was um, done and now the hoop. So if that's a concern, I always say just restitch over it. You don't have to do the whole design, just a little bit to cover up where it was. And then you can always bump yourself to that next color and get started right away. Okay, always thread and re-thread with your presser foot up because those tension discs are open. And I'm gonna remind you that threading the embroidery machine, as I say, with purpose, is going to make all the difference in the world. What do I mean by that? I mean that I want you to hold the thread up here. Okay, I'm kind of backwards because of where I'm standing, but hold the thread over here with one hand. And as you come down the tension groove right next to where number three is, I want you to hold on to the thread and I want you to floss it back and forth. As you floss it back and forth, you're going to make sure that that thread is seated all the way down in there. If you don't, what's gonna happen is you might get extra huge loops on the back of this embroidery hoop and you're gonna have to stop re thread, cut off those loops, back it up, start the color again, and um, at least it's easy to take out, but it's something that is an operator error, and I know you can just easily solve the problem by kind of holding on to this, give it a little thread floss, and then I'm gonna go ahead, if you have not mastered the needle threader yet, and you're changing colors from design to design, you're gonna really wanna make sure that you take the time, master the needle threader, so you can um, quickly change colors as you start to do more and more embroidery. Hold that thread, push start, let it get going. Stop it. Take your curved embroidery scissors and trim out and then start it again. When your screen says your embroidery is finished, you know that you can push down on that button, oh, lift up the presser foot, <laughs> push down on that button and slide your hoop completely out. Look how pretty that is. Again, 10 times prettier than what we, we saw on the screen or what we were expecting. So one little thing I see, we have s some of the tails from those last little corners it's stitched. A little key for trimming your stitches, if you have little tails, is a curve pair of embroidery scissors, find a pair you like, and it's okay to have more than one pair, everybody's hands are different, is you wanna lift up on the tail, push down with your scissors, and snip. Those are lock stitches, so you don't have to worry about them coming loose, but you do wanna take the time to, to not just snip at them, they'll leave a little kind of nub, and that actually looks even worse. So just make sure that you kind of lift up, push down, and trim out anything that is stick up. Even this last little one that's just really short, I'm going to take my fingernails, lift up, and trim, and now you don't even see. I do see one little last one as we got started, and now our design looks awesome. So a couple things, just a reminder, do you notice how it looks a little lower in the hoop? And that's because, remember the center of your hoop is actually not the center of the hoop, it's actually a little um, south because the foot needs room for it to hop along and cannot embroider right at the top edge. It can embroider near the lower edge closer than it can up here. So that's why everything's just shifted down for that center. Let's take a look at tension. So what are all these little threads? You see those threads kind of sticking up on the underneath side of the hoop? Yes, well, those are just, when it was jumping from color to color or area to area, it was cutting the thread and moving. So this, these are normal. You don't wanna cut really close to these because now you're cutting a knot 
off where it locked it. So you can trim them to be less, just not really close. So we're not doing the lift and pull and get it really close, but anything that might be longer jumps, I'm gonna cut them so I don't get my fingers caught or jewelry caught if, if it's a clothing item and I'm putting it on. Um, that's usually the main thing just to keep in mind of. Now, if you're doing lettering, here's a little trick. There's gonna be lots of these little tails as it cuts between each of the letters. So sometimes I'll actually go in and turn off my thread cutter when I'm doing stitching out words and lettering. You'll know what I mean. You don't have to have these little tails on the back. So tension. What we want to see is we want to see a little bit, you see all the color, right? And the color we see down here is because we adjusted that tension to a lower number. And at the beginning, where we started in the center, we don't see that color, and that's because it was more balanced. Like when you're sewing, you want your threads to match in the middle of the fabrics you're, you're sewing together, but if embroidery, we want everything to pull to the back. So when you turn this over, you should see the color of your design mixed in with a little bit the white bobbin thread showing and that's when you know you have good tension. Now if you don't have any white showing you probably went too low so you want to find that happy middle as you go. So just yeah it's kind of a balance you'll find out what works and that's always the balance between the thread you're using on the top and what thread you've actually put in your bobbin. So if you didn't put a bobbin weight thread in you had a little thicker thread this will look a little different. This, it's just a balance so either you go more and it gets worse or you go less and it gets better something of that bit. So that's something else that when we talk about testing out our embroidery designs that we we are testing not only the colors you're gonna use, but also how the tension is gonna look on the fabric. Did you pick enough stabilizer? You're supposed to use two uh, to get started here. Two minimum is my go-to. Did you use the right stabilizer? Is it a stretchy fabric? That type of thing. Those are things that all are going to be good reasons to always test your design before you get started. So I want you to take some time, stitch out some designs just on this. This would be a great way, some simple fabric, even white, or if you've got some tea towels <laughs> that are kind of boring, um, you can stitch on a tea towel, you can just put a whole bunch of designs on and use it as your test fabric. Just again, two layers of tearaway stabilizer will be great. But why don't you start stitching out some designs, seeing how they look. It's gonna get you comfortable with going between the screens. So like here, when I'm done, I'm gonna touch the check mark, I'm going to touch the X at the bottom to go back out to the embroidery edit and I'm going to say yes and then I can trash can the design and then go back out to the flower so I can pick in the or bring in the new design or maybe test out some of the lettering like we talked about. There's so many fun things just built into this machine to help you get started before you start jumping into other projects. So if this has been helpful, again, check out all the videos. Also make sure you're, you click like on every video that you watch of ours. That really helps our channel. We appreciate it. And uh, do it for other channels that you watch too. So click the like button as you go and have some fun stitching out some new embroidery designs.